This is Ilhan Magwal, a nine-year-old boy who was taken to be cremated in late 2022. All he did was take a sip of water from a pot meant for teachers, but due to his status as a Dalit, he was slapped on the ear, which caused for his vein to burst, which ultimately killed him. Caste has prevailed in Indian society like a social disease, to the point where an innocent boy was murdered just for the sake of a hierarchy. Multiple incidents like this have taken place in India over the last two decades, from murders to rapes. But most of the people who are guilty escape due to having connections to higher people or due to the justification of belonging to a higher caste. These are the negative impacts of the Indian caste system. Good morning. My name is Suthi Basu, and this brings me to my research question. To what extent have cultural expectations due to the caste system impacted life for people in India over the past 50 years? My argument is that Due to caste having such an overall negative influence on the previous and current generations, the caste system has inhibited material access for farmers, disabled proper healthcare access for people, and caused for unequal opportunities in the workplace, fueling discrimination. To start off, farmers don't have equal access to irrigation materials. The caste system has several different forms in different parts of India, but a general model can be taken from the past for reference. At the top of the pyramid were the Brahmins or priests in the temple. Below them were the Kshatriyas, who were the warriors or kings. Below them were the Vaishyas, who were the tradesmen, and at the bottom of this pyramid were the Shudras, or the servants. Building on this idea, this table, taken from a research study conducted by Timothy Waring at the University of Maine, highlights how leadership positions affected access to water. This table clearly demonstrates how every single, leader, every single servant position was assigned to the Dalits, or the low caste, and all the other leadership positions were taken by the middle class or the village leaders. Even though a majority of people in that section of the village were Dalits, they had no access to water since they have had no leadership positions. These people have no voice or medium to express their concerns since these villagers never gave them a chance to do so. This quote from Sri Krishnan further proves my point in inequality. The very fact that leadership and water management issues is exercised by the dominant caste itself is an important factor in ensuring compliance with the decision. If caste differences are continued to use to manage resource distribution, then there is no equal there is no opportunity for the development of equal attitudes and actions to take place. This causes for not every single farmer to have equal amount of water to perform agriculture. This quote from, taken from the College for Priority Stimulus, Haitian Survivors, demonstrates the definition for cultural resilience. These villagers are deploying cultural resilience since um, they're afraid of speaking out against their, they're afraid of speaking out against their leaders for society looking down upon them and possible exiling from the future from the villagers. A country like India needs a growing farmer population to feed around 1.4 billion people. If not every single farmer has equal water to go and farm, then they'll migrate to find better jobs, which decreases the agricultural output of the country. <laughs> Dalits don't have equal access to proper health care. This chart here demonstrates the life expectancies for both males and females across different castes and villages. It clearly shows how both the Adivasi and Dalit groups have the lowest life expectancies due to the nature of their working conditions. Their jobs often involve low sanitation and low safety, which causes them to contract diseases such as sickle cell anemia. These hereditary diseases continue to pass down through their future generations and causes them to have improper health conditions and not lead peaceful lives. This quote from Abati Ramaya further proves the de discrimination that takes place at hospitals. There have been a number of incidents where Dalit women have been denied access to public hospitals, and as a result, there have been incidents of deaths of mother or and child. Hospitals in India are the best when they're privatized. Government hospitals do not have enough funding or medication available. When Dalits often pr visit private hospitals, they're denied access due to the high fees or um, since the doctors have bias against low caste people. This, due to this, many Dalit women often home deliver, which causes them to go into risky situations, which causes the death of the mother or the child. If this continues, then uh, with this mistreatment of lower caste people, their health situation continues to take a toll for the worse, and uh, since no one is considered to in admit them to good hospitals. Low caste people do not have opportunities to prosper in the corporate workplace. This chart from the Hindustan Times demonstrates how SCs, or scheduled castes, have the low highest rates of unemployment across all categories, even if they have a graduate degree or higher. These people are not given enough opportunities in the workplace since they don't have enough money or connections to people in places of power. There also happens to be bias in the employee selection process since employees in high positions have a personal bias against low caste people and do not wish to see them in good positions in their company. This quote from the Cash Journal further proves my point in employment discrimination. 
The author asserts that despite affirmative action policies, the SC and ST have been unable to break the glass ceiling of the upper caste control over the health professions, especially physicians of all types. When people in high professions let their emotions interfere with their work, they're committing ethical crimes by not letting capable, good people work with them in the workforce. If they continue discriminating on the basis of caste, there is no opportunity for an equal workplace to be created. This quote from The Dark Side of Resilience further highlights the unrealistic expectations at the modern workplace. Resilience, defined as the psychological capacity to adapt to stressful circumstances and to bounce back from adverse events, is a highly sought after personality trait in the modern workplace. This causes the low caste people to further face this discrimination due to this cultural pressure of their economic situation. Their parents are dependent on the money they send back to the villages to make sure they live their lives normally. If they continue to face this discrimination and not speak out against their leaders to HR, then there will be no opportunity for the creation of an equal workplace where everyone feels safe and appreciated. However, this problem can be solved with these potential solutions. Having state laws with consequences that may jail time or high fines for discrimination against low caste people, having free healthcare camps for villagers that don't have access to proper medication, and it also allows them to know what diseases they may potentially have. And finally, having government checks in private companies to ensure that no one caste occupies the majority of positions in that company. However, these solutions come with limitations. For example, corrupt political leaders could misuse those discrimination laws during election times. If low caste people refused to vote for them, they would try to harm them to assert their dominance. Furthermore, low performing doctors could be sent to those medical camps to ensure that hospitals can still monetize using their good doctors, which defeats the purpose of those camps. And finally, the private companies could easily bribe government officials to make sure that their company secrets are not released to the public since they have a reputation to maintain that only high class people work in their office. This is Subramanya Bharatiya, a social reform worker who always worked to eradicate the ideals of the caste system. He has a famous saying in Tamil that warns against the use of the caste system. This directly translates to the idea that there is no caste, and praising or refuting others on the basis of caste is a sin. And only when everyone is, learn, is educated to learn and respect and love one and each other, a beautiful country like India can prosper the ideal that all Indians are each other's brothers and sisters, according to the National Pledge. These are my works cited. Thank you. Do you have any questions? All right, I do have two questions. First one, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use, and then why did you choose not to use it? I found plenty of evidence that showed that many young women in India were forced to marry people that belonging to the same caste system, but I chose to discard this evidence since this dated back to almost the 70s and the 60s, and it isn't relevant in our modern times. All right, and if you had more time, what additional research would you have conducted? If I had more time, I would have definitely researched on the unfair arrests or um, criminalization against low caste people since a lot of high caste people usually commit like political or politicians like sons or kids, they, co they commit crimes and in order to make sure that their reputation isn't tarnished, they blame it on the low caste people and make sure that they take their place in jail. So yeah, I would definitely conduct more research on those topics. 